Hello, welcome to Ready API, an integrated suite of applications for API testing. In this video, we will learn about the basics of data-driven testing of RESTful services. So, what is data-driven testing and why do you need it? Consider this, you have a functional test step set up. However, every time you run the test step, it sends the same data to the service. In real life, data might differ with every run. That's where data-driven testing proves to be useful. It lets you use pre-configured data sources to insert different pieces of data into the request every time you run the test step. Let's see how to use data sources in functional tests in Ready API. We'll use a project that works with the sample pet store API. It includes one test case with a request that updates a user on the server. Let's add a data source step. If you want to automatically create a data-driven loop that will make your request iterate through data in the data source, click yes, Select which parameters of the request will be added to the data source as columns. As you see, Ready API has automatically created a loop for you. Now select the type of data source. Ready API supports many types of external data sources and can even generate data itself. Here we will use an Excel file as a data source. The sample Excel file contains one sheet with two columns of values. The first row contains column names. Now select the file. You can automatically import column names into Ready API. To do that, enter the sheet name and the cell at which the row with the column name starts in the file, in our case, A1. As you see, Ready API automatically created properties with column names from the Excel file. Now we need to set the cell from which data retrieval will start, in our case, A2. You can run the data source to check what data retrieves for each property. Next, set up the request test step to use data from the data source. As you see, Ready API created a property expansion for the username parameter. It will pass data from the username column of the data source. Now we need to insert the last name into the request body. To do that, right-click the last name node, select Get Data from the context menu, and select the property you want to insert into the body. Now when you run the test step, the data is taken from the data source. Now you can run the test case. As you see, the update user test step was executed three times. Each time, different data was taken from the data source and sent with the request. You might also want to store data sent or retrieved during test runs to an external storage. To do that, use the data sync test step. Make sure that the test step is inside the data source loop. Again, we'll use an Excel sheet to save data. The file has one column named status code to which we will be saving status codes returned by the server. Enter the sheet name in the cell from which the data recording will start. Now create a property the value of which will be saved to the data sync. Use a property expansion to refer to the status code. Now you can run the test case. As you see, status code values were saved to the Excel file. Those are the basics of data-driven testing. Check out our other videos to learn more about data transfer and other topics. Thank you for watching.